was 700 and then so on and so on. And then like you got five sales at $700 and then another $700 for six sales. And that's what I did with Sunrun. I was making a lot of money. I was making like four to $5,000 um, a month. You know, some months were 20, 2,500. Some months were 3,300, 3, depending on how many sales. I remember there was this girl, her name was Melanie. And she was the top sales associate in the entire Illinois. And she always made $10,000 a month with this company. And I'm talking about $10,000 a month. She would come in dressing up in costumes, dressing up in everything you can, um, like decorating the cart. And she would go around, like if it was Christmas time, she would have like, you know, Christmas lights on her. She would decorate her car and she's, you know, riding, like she, she's like going in the car, like, oh, hi, what are you shopping for? And everything else like that, you know. And so, like, I learned from her. You know what I'm saying? She's, she was very, 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 very good at what she did. She was very smart. She was very knowledgeable. She knew how to talk. She knew how to sneak her way into, like, you know, getting these people to go solar. I mean, she was the number one associate in Sunrun. I, I, was, it was, I, was, I was shocked. You did good there, too, though, Danny. I did. I did. I, I did try my best. I really did. I really loved that job. I mean, that job was, I was so happy. I was getting up every day and going to work and doing what I had to do. And I miss it. Like, I miss it. Like, it was that job where you didn't have a boss behind your back. You know, you were out in the field and you were just going to Home Depot or a Costco and you would just walk around talking to homeowners about the solar and how you know, everything was going up in Illinois, you know, so it was, you know, then if your boss needed you to text her, but she was, she would be at, like, she'd be running around to different stores, like, she wasn't even behind you, you know, like, it was just, it was so, it was just like, and you're not even working for, like, Home Depot, you're, like, you're basically partnership with a company, you know what I'm saying, and it was, it was a great opportunity for me, you know, I, I, I met a lot of good people at the store and the management team. You know, I used to wear like a sun outfit. So I bought the sun outfit and I was walking around and I'm like, uh, what, did I, what was my saying? I used to say something. Um, uh, oh, what was it? Um, and people were laughing. Like I had this huge yellow costume. Like it was like a, it was like a, it was a sun. And I had like the little thing. I can you know, imagine just here. Let me show you what it looked like. Hold on. I have to show you. I have to show you. Hold on. I have to show you what it looked like. I have to show you. Hold on. Alright, hold on. Alright, you're going to laugh at me. Okay, you're really going to laugh at me. But this is exactly what it looked like. Okay, I'm not lying. So, like, I literally was dressed up just like this. Okay, and I was walking around in Home Depot in this outfit. Okay, I'm not joking you. Okay, I'm not joking you. And I would literally walk around and she goes, oh, there's the sun girl. Oh, there's her sun run. Sun, you get it, sun. So, um, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, if you go solar, you know, the sun and you are going to be like best friends. You can control your rates, you know. Just come talk to me. I'll be your sunshine, Ray. You know what I'm saying? I just made those little comments and... It, it just lighted up people. It, it lighted up their faces, man. When I walked in and all these kids were like, oh, mommy, 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 look. Oh, mommy, there's the sun. And, you know, it was just, it was fun. And, you know, especially when, it, when the days were raining and I came into the store and like, oh, Danny, you brought the sun into work. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sunshine is here, baby. <laughs> so, you know, it just, it truly made me happy. And it was one of like the best jobs I've ever had in my entire life. Like, just like low key, like really, truly was an inspirational company to work for. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, I'd be dancing down the the um the halls and, and, and the aisles and I'm like, you know what are you shopping for? And he, and they go, Oh, look who showed up. You know, I had the bun, a little cute little bun with my makeup and you know, I was like, Oh yeah, your sunshine girl is here, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna take you on for a ride, you know, I'm just and just like those little things just it just I made it so much fun and 
you know, people love that. And I brought so much joy to a lot of people at work and a lot of fun times. And that was probably my, my favorite job I've had for a very long time. And I just enjoyed it so much. I really, truly did. I, I, I did these positive encouragements every day for our huddle because we had to get on to our huddle calls you know before we went into the store and uh, I used to make videos for the company I used to make positive um, videos to the team and I would I would make them and then I would send them into our group chat and to pump up the team you know and bring in the PMA and it just it felt really good to to be acknowledged of my positivity with Sunrun. And unfortunately, um, I could go back if I wanted to. You know, I did get let go for um, for being sick so much back in Illinois. But um, they said that between like six months to a year, I could reapply. I just can't be a CEA. Um, but I can be anything with the company. I just can't go back to that position. Um, which is unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. It's part of life that I can't, I can't change, but you know, um, if I could go back into solar energy, I really would 125 million percent. I, I would go back into, into solar because solar energy was just so wonderful to work in just the customer service aspect of it all. And the sales and the commission. I mean, you got hourly pay plus commission. I mean, these people made $100,000 a year just by walking into a store and, and setting up appointments. That's all they had to do. Once you set up an appointment, they go to that appointment, the FFC goes out to that house and boom, talks about it, what you talked in the store and they, they book the sale, bam, sale right there. There's money right in your pocket. No ifs, no ands, no buts about it. Even if they cancel it, you still get that commission. I mean, it's just like 20, I can imagine $25 every time you set up an appointment. Like you set up an appointment, you lock in their appointment, right? They cancel, you still get that $25 no matter what. Now you have to go back in your pipeline and you have to recall those people to reschedule those appointments. But <coughs> I mean, you get, you get that money. You know what I'm saying? Like, Walking in the store, just walking for eight to ten hours, talking about solar and making appointments for twenty five dollars plus an hourly pay. I mean, you talk about a job that you can make good money. <laughs> that was that was the job. That was the job. So it was really good. Uh, it was a really good opportunity. Did you get fired? Um. So that's when my life took a turn, when I got let go from Sunrun. That's when my life turned. So I got let go. I did get let go for, it was my attendance, and it was for me being sick so much. And um, they gave me a lot of chances. I, I'm not going to lie, they gave me a lot of chances. But um, there was a lot of issues. And there was a lot of things that didn't go. No, I thought, this was, no, this is not my current job. No, this was, this was, oh shit. This was back when I, oh, what year was this? This had to be like in 2022, 2023. No, no, this was back in, oh my God. When did I work for Sunrun? Um, 2020, no, 2019. 2019 I think 2019 they had stuff like that at Home Depot they had someone trying to sell robot vacuum cleaners yeah oh, okay I was worried no but it was a learning experience you said it was during COVID yeah it was it was during COVID so that was when did co what, what, when did that was that back in 2019 that was back in 2019 right when COVID happened when it first happened or was that 220 was that 20 or 19? That was 2009. Okay. Okay. So then I, then I started then I started working in the company in 2019 then. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 2019. Yeah, then I started working for the company in 19. Yeah. Early 2020. Yeah. Then it was 19. 
So, yeah, I love my job. It was kind of funny. You want to hear something funny? So, when I worked at Sunrun, okay, now my boss, okay, his name was Michael. Um, when I first got hired, he looked at me, he goes, you look so familiar. Do you have a twin? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, the name, right? You know who my twin is. And so he goes, I was her GM at Petco, at PetSmart, when she was a groomer. And I was like, you're joking. And he's like, no, no, I was I, I was her manager. I was, the, I was the manager at PetSmart in Hoffman Estates. And I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, small world. Small world. Yeah, my boss turned out to be my boss then. That, was, that sounds like a fun job. Now, working at the Costco was not fun. You could not walk around. You had to stay put. And when Costco people, they leave and they walk out. They're, they're like speed racers, like like lightning. They walk out, like completely walk. Like they don't even care. They're not like they're going to dismiss you. But Home Depot and Costco both have two different programs. You know what I'm saying? So you have a, you have a leasing program or you have a purchase program. So if you go through the Costco, you have to purchase the solars. If you go through the Home Depot, we offer both. So you can purchase them out right there and then, or you can lease the programs. Then we have promotions like it's a dollar, you know, to, to sign up for right now. So, um, yeah. So it was, uh, I learned a lot about solar. I learned about, I mean, the benefits, you know, um, FFC is field, wait, field, huh, wait, FSC, FS, field sales, FSC, field sales, something, something with the field, I don't know, I used to be an annoying telemarker. Yeah. No, it was a. Uh, I think that job was my favorite. And then. This job that I'm working now. Is probably my all time favorite. So. I'm just happy I found a job that I enjoy. And that I love and. I really do. I really like my job. I really do. I, I love my job now that I work. I really do. I, I can't complain. I really enjoy it. That's good, Danny. Yeah, it's about dang time I find a job that I like. Oh. Oh, it's dark in here. I guess they went to bed. They went to sleepy, sleepy. Oh, where did I put my... Aha. One sec. Where'd you go? Danny, you don't have to answer if you don't want to put it in there. Yeah, she was. Yes, she was. Yep, that's not a lie. Trust me, I wouldn't tell you the truth. I would tell you the truth. She was. That was not a... That's not a...
that's not a joke. She really truly was. And that's good for um. Is that medicine? It is. It is medicine. It's for my. I told you I take meds at night. Pet Smart. She went to school because Pet Smart. Pet Smart put her into because she was a groomer. And then they had a school that you went to to get proper training. And then she went through Penn Foster to get additional training. And then she and she worked in a couple of vet spots. So, but yeah, she, she truly was. Oh, okay, I was just wondering, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, I wouldn't lie to you about that. Oh yeah, the stories that I've heard was just insane. Danny, I am so freaking proud of you, how far you've come. It's been beautiful watching you bloom. Thank you. How's the knee been feeling? Well, considering it doesn't hurt all the time, it comes and goes. So there's days where I'm okay and I don't, like, whatever. And then there's some days where I'll feel the pain and it'll come, like, a sharp pain. But I have to wait for my insurance to kick in before I go see an orthopedic doctor. So I probably won't be able to go see one until November. And then once I get the active, once I get the insurance, I'll get myself a primary care doctor. And then I'll get, like you know, therapy, because I've been looking, and so I already have all of my insurance, so now I just gotta start looking for the places that do accept my insurance, so when I do get it, I can call them back instead of pay, instead of a time, so I can, I can go and do that. So I've got some stuff that I'm in the process of doing. Back in the day, they would train you on the spot for a CNA, now you have to take classes. Be sure to get checked at when insurance is active. I know. There's some places that I uh, that friends have been sending me that I've been looking into. So I'm going to start looking into like therapy sessions and whatnot and then go from there. But I don't know if I want to do like online or if I want to do in person. Like I feel like in person would be more better because I'm face to face with them and they can like see my body language and everything like that and understand that I've been through a lot versus as like telegram or like video call they're not going to really get the full like you know of me so like I, w I think I'm going to try the in person to actually try to have that connection with that therapy so it just it's in a process that I'm just trying to think about Where's Enzo? Want to see him? Enzo. Enzo. I love you. I love you so much. I agree with you, Danny. In person would be better. Yeah. 100%. And I need a lot of therapy. I really, truly do. Like, that's not a lie. I do. A lot. No, I need a lot. A lot. Yeah, a lot. But I would say more than the average person, you know what I'm saying? Because I have a lot of trauma. I have, I have a lot of issues that I need to get resolved. And Lord help me know I'm mercy. I, I need it more than ever. Because 
Jesus. <laughs> Longo. Join the freaking club. I love therapy. Saving grace. Well, and you guys say it helps a lot, so, you know, I, uh, I trust you guys in that. I mean, when I tell you I wasn't hiding, I was, I'm still going to get help. Like, that's, no, that's never going to go away. You know what I'm saying? I just, that's why I work so hard. That's why I want to keep a job so I can get insurance and get help. That's the only way I'll get help is, you know, and if that goes taken away, then that loses my chance and opportunity to get help, you know? So it's scary when, you know, you have a job and you don't want to lose it. And that's why I just work very hard. That's why I want to hold down this job. That's why I don't like calling off or, you know, anything like that. And I just show up wanting to work because, like, in my past, like, you know, you work so hard for something and then you don't take the responsible thing and then you lose it and all that hard work goes down the drain and then your insurance goes bye bye and then everything and it's let's it's like <clears throat> so you know taking care of yourself and taking care of what you need to take care of is really truly important you know what i'm saying cuz like i want to get the help i want therapy i want to be able to talk with somebody get my life back on track and if I don't have insurance and I don't have a job, I like how am I going to get help to become a better person? How am I going to change some of the things that I'm changing without that guidance, without that support system, you know, to talk to somebody and get the a professional help, you know? And like, and that's something that I want to do to work for myself because I sit here every single day, like, everyone says, You need help, Danny, you need help. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah I do. You're right. I'm not going to sit here and deny that. You know, but, like, I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to work for all these things and bust my ass off and put my blood and sweat and tears into a job and lose it because, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not being responsible and, like, you know, that's why I work. I want to work so hard because I want to be able to get the correct help and I want to be able to get professional help. And that's just the bottom line. You know, if I lose this job or I lose everything, I don't I don't get that professional help. I won't be able to, you know, it's like a life coach, you know, maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll they'll give me some ideas to get me away from the, the, the app or they'll they'll help me, you know, guide me and then try to lead me to do different things instead of being on TikTok all the time. So, like, there's positive things that go into here. Like, I'm not saying I'm leaving the app, but you know, maybe it, it could help me, you know, take some time and, and, and do some different things. I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? There's just so much thing that goes through my head about what the positive aspects could come out of the therapy, you know? And when you want to do something, you work hard for it and you do whatever you have to do to, to better yourself, you know? So, because I know that with therapy, like, you have an addiction, right? They can help you, you know, not... I wouldn't say they they can take those stuff away, but they can help you find things to do to break those bad habits, like those addictions, into other things. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, like, I've I just been talking to people that have been going through therapy, and they say it helps, it's life-changing, it, it really does make you a better person, and... That's just the mindset that I want to go with, like, thinking to myself, like, going to therapy, man, like, could be a life-changing experience, like, it really could, like, depending on how you use it and how serious you want to use it, but you got to be serious about it, you just can't be like, oh, well, whatever, I want to therapy, but I'm not going to listen to them, like, you really have to listen to their advice and you have to go with it, because if you don't, it's a waste of their time, it's a waste of your time, it's a waste of the insurance money, and you know, like, but I don't think it's a waste of time. Like, I'm actually looking forward to getting the help. That's why I, that's why I go to work. That's why I'm not losing this job because, like, I, like, I don't know. You know, you need anything outside to help you. Mm-hmm. That's 100%. So I do what I have to do, and I have to 
protect myself and I have to keep thriving and keep moving forward to make better decisions, I guess, you know? And I think that with therapy and a couple of years and everything like that, it will, I mean, I think I'm doing great without therapy, but like, I can't imagine like having therapy right now and being on the track that I am is just gonna, it's just gonna succeed in, in a lot of different ways. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I'm excited. I really am. So in November, it's happening. I meant to say you need an outsider that doesn't know your situation. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. A hundred percent. A hundred and twenty-five million percent. Like, yeah, you're not wrong with that. You're definitely not wrong. But, you know, I just, I look at the the positive things. You know what I'm saying? I feel like... You know, you do what you have to do, you know. So I think everything's just going to be fine. I really do. I just cannot wait for November. I can't wait. I have to find out when it kicks in, though, in November, because I don't know what the date is. I just know in November will be my 90 days. And then my 90-day probation is over. But I don't know what day it is going to fall on in November. So I got to find that out tomorrow. And you are a strong person and you can do this. Well, I know I can. I just put my mind to something. If you put your mind to something, you can accomplish anything. Anybody can do anything they put their mind to. It doesn't matter. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall. You're going to do everything. But it's, I don't know. It's kind of like you just got to put it in God's hands and. Leave it into his hands and just do it. And that's why I try not to worry as much as I can because I know at the end of the day, like, it's all on him and he's the one that controls everything. And I can't control anything. I just can't. I can control myself and I can control what I feel and then how I feel, but you can't control anybody else and what they do. You can't control anyone's feelings. You can't control anybody's attitude you can't control anybody like you can't fix anybody you can't heal anybody you can't do any of that but you can heal yourself you can protect yourself you can, can control your mindset you can control your body language you can control a lot of things on you but when it comes to other people you just can't and that's something that I had to learn that's something that we all have to learn is that you can't you can't fix somebody you look at somebody and you like, I want to shut up because like I just can't do it anymore. Like, you love somebody so much, and you try everything you can to do everything you can, and they have to fix themselves. You can't fix them. You'll never be able to make someone happy if they don't have, if they're not happy themselves. You can never. You, that person, has to make themselves happy in order for them to have a good life. And that's like in a relationship. If you're not happy in a relationship, and you can't make that other person happy. Just like any other relationship. That's why, that's what causes toxic causes destruction causes trust issues causes fighting because you're so not happy with yourself and you want to put the blame on everybody else but not you because you don't want to take the blame but you're so miserable that your life isn't going anywhere. So you want to blame it on everybody else, but you can't blame it on anybody else. You got to take the blame on you because it's you, nobody else. So when you're portraying the victim, you ain't going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere. If you think you are going to get anywhere, you're wrong. You're 100% wrong. You won't. And that's just the reality.
You know, the one thing I learned in life is that nobody, nobody in this world can make you happy. Nobody can make you positive. Nobody can make you have a good life. Nobody can make you do anything. If you don't like the way you are, you don't like the way you think, you don't like the way your life is, it's nobody's fault. Don't be putting that blame on anybody else because you better look yourself in the mirror and say, "Uh uh-uh, wrongo, it's you. You're the problem. Not her, not him. You. And it's playing the blame game. Blame it on this person. Blame it on you. It's all your fault. It's all your fault because... They're so hurt and they don't want to put the blame on themselves because they want to put the blame on you. And then it's you. It's your fault. You did this. Oh, my God. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, put the blame game. Everything's your fault. Wrongo. It's not. It's your fault. Your fault. Take accountability for what you're doing for what you're looking at and then reflect on what you're doing and what you're saying because you can conflict those two if you say the wrong thing and so when it comes to reality you think before you speak because the tongue is the devil I've said it and I'll say it again it's a weapon it's a weapon your tongue is a weapon And when you use it, you can use it in a positive way or you can use it in a negative way. And when you open that big mouth, it can be dangerous or it can be smart. And that is why you really have to be very careful on how you say things and what you say and how you say things. Because it can affect somebody's life. It can affect someone's feelings. It can affect anything. And you don't realize this until it hits you in the ass. And then reality slaps you back into the face. And then it pulls you in. And you learn from it. You know, the one thing I'm so sick and tired of everybody blaming on everybody else. It's your fault. You did this wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, just hold yourself accountable and just do better. Bottom line. Just stop putting the blame on everybody else because your life isn't where you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? I hate the blame game. I hate it. I don't like it. I really don't. I hate it. I really, truly hate the blame game. I hate when you have to get everything handed your way. I hate that when you just sit there and you're just like, oh, yeah, blame everything on you. But then the other person gets everything handed. It's like, oh, so I get the beat of it. I get the end of the stick. I see. Okay, that's fine. You know, I don't know. It's just how I feel you know so when you sit here and you're just like I feel like we're in a therapy session right now <laughs> oh my god I'm gonna shut up I'm gonna shut up I feel like I'm gonna shut up Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I got to stop talking. Whoa, you are absolutely right. I like this therapy session. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I hope you use that thing. But no, it's true. Like, you're not the victim. Stop portraying it. I'm dealing with someone, something similar, so I can really feel you. Yeah. It's not fun. It's not fun when you try to have a good heart and you try to do everything right. And you still get the blame for every little thing you do. You know? (sighs) 
That's why I like to be alone. Because then I don't get blamed for anything if I'm just alone. Like, that's why I like to be alone. That's why I don't like anybody. That's why I don't like to live with everybody. Because I don't get blamed. I don't. That's why I don't want to be in a relationship. That's why I don't want to have anything. Because... I'm afraid I'm always going to be the one to get blamed. I'm all, I'm afraid I'm always going to be the one to get hurt. And, like, I'm done with getting hurt. I'm done getting with... I'm, get, I'm done with getting stabbed in the back. You know? And that's just the one thing that's very scary, guys, is that you guys don't know what anybody goes through. You don't know what that person's going through. And it's like, do I want to be happy? Yeah, I do. I do want to be happy. I do want to find myself again, which I am slowly but surely. But I just, I don't want to be the blame. I don't want to be the blame guy. I'm I'm sick and tired of it. You know, it's like, when is it going to be over? When is it going to be done with it? And then when I live on my own, I just, I feel more content. I feel more at peace. I feel more loved. I feel more self-independency instead of, yeah, like a scapegoat. Yeah. You have to also make boundaries that people can't cross. Teach people how to treat you. Exactly. It happened. will happen in God's timing. I'm hoping, Lauren. I really am hoping. Escape, yeah. Because you always put your heart out there. So it's time to find what makes you happy. Exactly. That's the, that's the bottom line. You know, and I want to play softball. I want to go out. But, of course, this hurricane really messed that up. And then my knee and everything else like that. So I have to get that checked out before I even go play. Before I really do something. And then I'm out of work for a month. Because I can't afford that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. It's, you know. But I, I will play softball. I will. I will. Eventually, I will. Get back in the game. Get back in the field. I should be, I should do a, I should go back to being an umpire. And, oh, you know what? I'm wondering if I can go ahead and go to the park district or go on Facebook and see if they, there's, there's softballs that need umping or like, I could do that. Maybe I can go be an ump again and get back on the field. That'd be kind of cool. I'm going to look into that tomorrow, I think. I want to see. Maybe I can be an ump pirate. That'd be kind of cool job. I would like that. I'd love to be an umpire. Making you a vision board with goals on it. Yeah, I could do that. And I check list every single one of them when they are completed. Like check one. Oh, completed. Check two. Completed. Check three. Completed. Yeah. You know what made me happy? I didn't want to tell you guys this. But I had one of my team, like my teammates, come talk to me. And he goes, Danny, can I talk to you? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, I just want to say thank you for everything. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? You don't say thank me. And she, he goes, well, you're very, you're very good at what you do. And I have a learning disability. And the way that you tra- teach me and the way you talk to me and the way that you, you work with me and the way you teach, I learn a lot better. And you're the best uh you're the best team member I've had in a while who's very good at training. And I looked right at him and I said, you know what? I said, I knew there was something about you because I have the same thing. I have a learning disability too as well. And I knew it when I saw you and how you worked. I sat back and I said, Yep, that's that's me. And he goes, Really? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, well, I just want to say thank you very much for everything you've done. Because, like, my my past jobs, everybody just didn't work with me. They, they just put me in anything else because I couldn't learn fast enough. And I said, 
you know, if we have to do it over 20 times, 30 times, we'll do it, you know, and that just kind of felt nice to know that he recognizes how, how patient I have with people like that. And because when I see people struggling and learning, you know, and trying to figure things out, you know, um, because I, I, I'm the same way. It takes me a long time to get the hang of things. And it was just a good feeling when he pulled me to the side and just wanted to say that to me. It felt so good. You know, and he's doing phenomenal. He really, truly is. And I'm so proud of him. I really, really, truly am. And I sat there for three hours working with him. He said, I can't do this, Danny. I said, yeah, you can. So I said, you know what, just, just, just step back. I'm going to show you, and then I want you to do it, okay? And I said, repeat after me, okay? And I kept, I kept working with him. I kept working with him. I said, and he goes, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do it, Danny. And I'm like, okay, so let's try another route. And I kept on figuring out how to do this. I said, okay, take a deep breath. Let's just, let's just pause. Let's just take a break, and we'll go back to it again. You know, and says, if you want to keep doing it, we'll keep doing it. If you want to take a break, we'll keep, we'll take a break. We can do this all day, okay? we got plenty of time to just sit back in and work things out. You know, it kind of just felt good to see him relaxed and to see him not, like, over frustrating. And, and like, I, I, I turned my back around because I don't like how people stand over me. So I told him, I said, you know, I'm going to turn around. I want you to pretend that I'm not here. I'm just going to turn around. I'm not going to look at you. I'm not going to do anything. And I want you just to talk to me like I'm your homegirl. That's just what I want you to do. I just want you to talk to me like we're best friends, just sitting here talking, just like normal, okay? Um, I'm your homegirl, okay? So just sit there and just talk to me like I'm just, like we've known each other for years. You know what I'm saying? Just like how we're at your house, we're just talking and chilling. And he goes, okay, okay. I'm like, all right, let's do it again. And so when I did that, you know, he... Uh, I go, you did it, you know, you did it, like, that was, that's incredible, like, look at the energy that you have, like, that's exactly what, you know, I was looking for, and he goes, yeah, thank you, I appreciate you, and I'm like, yeah, you're welcome, you're very, very welcome, and, you know, it just, <sighs> I like, I like working with people like me, that have learning disabilities, that have trouble, you know, with, with learning because I can relate to those people and like, I know the feeling, I know how they feel. I know the mindset, I know the, the concentration. I know, like, I just know. And when you, when you, when you see those type of people, you know, you're not alone and you know, what they're going through and how they feel and you can work with them because you're the exact same way and when other people are fast learners and they go like oh i can get this within five minutes or i can get this in 10 minutes and then you have other people who take like an hour to five hours to eight hours to two days to 24 hours you know and, and it takes more time for them it can get frustrating when somebody doesn't know how to work with those type of people and it can get very overwhelming for those people that are very fast learners like why are you not catching on like what are you doing like this needs to be done like why why is it taking this long and then you get you feel you're hurt you're feeling like oh my god well I'm sorry I don't it takes me a long time to get used to this and I've had managers like that that they said well Danny why can't you do this what's going on Danny like we've been doing this for a week you should already have this down you know what I'm saying? And I, I've been there. And that's why when I see people who have a learning disability, I'm, I, I can relate more to them. And I can take my time with them because I put myself in their shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if this was me? How would I like to be trained? How would I like to be talked to? You know, and, and some people are visualized learners. So when they watch somebody and they do something, they're not, they're not learning that way. What they're going to learn is when you're by them and they're doing it themselves and you say, okay, do this. 
I push this, push that button, do this, do that, do this, do, 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 you know what I'm saying? And it's like when you take your time with somebody in any type of field and you work with them and you let them do it, they're going to step back and they're going to be like, they're going to do so much better. Because you're giving them the opportunity to do it by themselves and to stand there motivating them. Like, good job. There you go. Good job. And then putting that positive mindset into into them, you know, instead of having them like, you know, oh, why are you watching me? What are you doing? Like, am I messing up? And then you get scared. You feel like you're going to mess up. And if you just talk to them like your family, you're like your homeboys, your home girls, they get more comfortable with you. They get more relaxed with you, knowing that you're not behind them watching every little move. And it's, it's a good feeling to, to work with those people. And I think I do a lot better into those things. I don't know. I just, I'm weird. But that's just how I feel. But it makes me happy to know that I can help people like that. And when someone comes up to you and they, and they say that to you, it's... It's a very good feeling. It really truly is. I hated when I had people walk over me and like look over my shoulder. It would make me so nervous. It would make me shake. It would make me tremble. I would feel like I'd be messing up and then I would get yelled at or I would get screamed at. But then like the way you train people because you don't know if they have a learning disability you have no idea you don't know and I had no idea he had a learning disability I mean I knew there was something but I didn't know what it was and when he told me he had a learning disability I was like yeah I figured and you can see him nervousness like I don't know, I guess I can relate to people like me. That's so cool. I think you should put the costume on and bright everyone's day. I could buy a sun costume. <laughs> Sunshine of rays, man. Sunshine of rays, baby. I feel like we're having a therapy session. I really do. And I guess that would be $280 today for the whole hour session, please. I will take credit, debit or credit. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You don't have to pay me. Just kidding. I kind of felt to get off that in my chest. I need to get that off. I think we're having a TikTok uh, therapy session. I do. I think I think we're having a therapy session. <sighs> I kind of felt good. I'm not gonna lie to get that off my chest. Kind of felt good. You know, it feels good when you can let it out. When you can talk about things. You know, it feels good. And then I think you have a better night's sleep. You know, when you close your eyes and you know you did a good job. You know you tried your best today. And you can lay down that pillow. And you can close your eyes and you can be like, you know what? I made it another day and I'm glad I'm still here. You know, even when you're sick or you're not, you're tired. You can just tell yourself, you know what? I did it another day. And if I did it today, I could do it tomorrow. You know? It does feel good when nobody's interrupting you, right? Yeah. It feels really good. I don't know. It just... It just makes you feel like you're a better person. Somebody that can relate to you, somebody that knows what you're going through, something like just to just to know, you know, it's like I hate having a learning disability. I hate it. 
Because in the end, it makes you feel stupid. It really, truly does when you're not stupid. You know what I'm saying? And, like, people make fun of you on how you pronounce things of how you talk and how you how you learn different things, you know, and some people don't have the patience for people like me. And a lot of people do. And it just makes you feel less valued when people don't have patience and to work with you, you know. Um, and when people have understanding of people that have really bad learning disabilities or uh, different like levels of learning and you just don't have the patience it can get overwhelming for those people. Because it just can. And when you don't have patience to work with somebody, that takes a while to learn a new program or to learn a new device or to learn how to do things. I mean, it's frustrating for someone that has ADHD. You know, you try to do everything right and you try to do it by yourself, you know, but... It can take you a day, it can take you a year, it can take you two months to learn something new. You know what I'm saying? And then the jealousy comes into play when you see everybody else doing the things that you want to do but you can't. And it's hard for you because they learn so much quicker than you do. And you're just sitting here and just like, dude, how are they doing that so fast? And it takes me like all these hours to complete it. It's jealousy. It's jealousy. It's it's somewhat jealousy. It's like, dang, I wish I had that brain. Dang, I wish I was smarter in that department. Or I wish I was smarter in that category. And it's it's a jealousy thing. It really truly is. I I'm not gonna fit. I'm not gonna admit that. I'll admit that. I am jealous. I'm jealous of people that can pronounce different words. I'm jealous that people have, you know, um, that they can do things that I can't do. You know what I'm saying? And it's like. I don't know. Jealousy is a big thing. You are a better person. Authentic. Love this. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. But. Jealous. Jealousy. You know, I mean, you can put your mind to anything. You can accomplish it. That's why I do things like the catchery and how I put stuff together. I'm like, I can do this. And then I get frustrated. And then I'll take a break and then I'll come back to it. And I'll just, you know what I'm saying? It's never too late to learn. Oh, you're right. Everyone is unique in their own way. Never forget that. Nobody is perfect at everything. Well, yes, that is true. Nobody is perfect. But if you want to do something, you can. We all have certain gifts. You're so smart and so strong, Danny. You got this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know I am. I know I am. <sighs> I feel better. I got that off my chest. You put your all in everything you do. I try to. I do try to make it the best. I do. I'm not like it's not always going to be that way, but I do try, though. In every in every single way I try. You know, I'm, I know I'm not stupid. I know I'm not dumb. You know, some of the things I do are stupid. I'm not going to lie about that. <laughs> like, we, kinda, we all can agree on that, right? Because <laughs> I do something so stupid, you know, but... <sighs> I guess that's the part where you have to learn your boundaries. That's what counts. You're a hard worker. Yeah. What the hell's on my tongue? I swear to God. Like, ugh. Yeah. It's not thrush. No, it's not. It's not thrush something else I'm sick that's why I have water oh.
rape your tongue. Some days I do. Some days I do. I know I need to do it all day. I need to do it every single day. That's what I do. That's what I need to start doing. <laughs> I need to start scraping my tongue. Maybe it's the medicine. Oh, that's right. It could be the medicine. It Doesn't it antibiotic? You got a case of cotton mouth. Yeah, dude, the freaking, um, the antibiotic causes that. I think an antibiotic causes, like, thrush, but I don't know if that's actually true or not. I think it does, but I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. But I think somebody told me that. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're, you are right. Yeah, antibiotic causes thrush. So, could be thrush. Take probiotics or yogurt. Yeah, some antibiotics can cause thrush. Yeah. I figured. I did figure. I did. I did figure that that could happen. Well, guys, guess what? You know what time it is? I gotta be up at 8 for work. So, so I appreciate the therapy session today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for letting me talk a little bit about how I was feeling. Appreciate that. And now the session is closed. So now this girl has got to go back to sleep since I slept all day. And uh, try to lay down and get some sleep. Because in 30 minutes I have to be up in 8 hours. So I want to get a full night of 8 hours of sleep. So, before it's too late. So, I'm going to go to bed. I hope that... I thought someone was here. Um, no one cares. Well, that's sad to say that to somebody. What was that? Did you hear that? No, really, did you guys hear that? That's not nice. Nah, whatever, it's okay. Alright, guys, that, that was scary. Okay. I don't know, maybe the boogeyman's here. God knows what. Okay, well, listen, what was it? I don't really know. I felt like it was a door opened. But that was kind of weird. I don't even know what that was. That was really strange. I didn't hear anything. I saw you look for a second. I mean, there is a ghost in here. I'm not going to lie. There is 100% a ghost in here. I think it's here. I don't know. Probably a spirit. It's probably an angel. It's an angel looking out for me. That's what I think it is. <sighs> well, tell us about the ghost. There's no ghost. Enzo over there, just like chilling right now. Like, there's nothing in the world that's gonna stop him from not chilling. <sighs> Hulu. Let's look up Hulu. Yes. An angel, most definitely. Okay, that's really loud. That's really loud. I'm going to wake these people up. So I got to go. All right, guys. Listen. I love you guys. Sleep tight. Have an amazing day tomorrow. I'll see you guys in the morning. Enjoy your night. Get some rest. Take care of yourself. Be positive. You're loved. And trivia is Wednesday night. So um, I will love you guys. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.